uh, unrepresented indigenous or minority communities um, that are being discriminated uh, within every state member state of UN. Um, the all the state members have all the year to discuss all the issues and they give only three minutes a year to indigenous and non unrepresented nation to talk about all their suffering, sufferings. But um, you have to imagine how these three minutes, it is hard to gain, hard to earn, and how they make it even harder. I would have put my, I will refer to my own community explaining that, but it would have been the same for all the, for all the communities that uh, they are uh, non-represented in their own countries. Um, for example, uh, for me, uh, I was living in Syria, but still I had Iranian passport. So still Iran is representing me. So if I want to get a visa to come to Geneva, I need to represent myself as an Iranian citizen. Iran is under sanction, but they don't care if I am unrepresented, if I am from the opposition, but still they're gonna deal with me as Iranian. So there is no chance that I will get the visa. So I was in Syria, 2009, they kidnapped my dad, <coughs> Iranian government from Iran, from our house. So I didn't have a chance to come to Geneva to to represent my case. In 2012, uh, the war escalated more in Syria. I ran away, I came in Europe. Luckily for me, my community was already accepted as a discriminated community, as a minority group, aside of all the minority groups in Iran, like Turks and Arab and Belushis and Kurds that they are not represented in our political pl platform. So I got my... Um, political uh, refugee status really, ca I can say relatively, um, really easy. So first obstacle, getting visa is done, but now you need a visa to enter UN itself. Uh, because also, as uh, you said here, um, my organization, Ahwas Humanity Organization, is registered since 15 years ago in US, but until now, we don't have ECOSOC because we have been blocked by China a good friend of Iran uh, to prevent us uh, from getting uh, ECOSOC because actually I guess the, the file was with Tabet so they saw them together, they reject them together. So we don't have ECOSOC if we want to enter, we really need uh, another organization to ask for accreditation so we can uh, enter uh, UN. Well, you can imagine most of us from persecuted communities coming to the most rich, uh, most expensive city uh, almost in Europe to stay only two or three days to have these three minutes to finally go under the same roof of Iranian delegation to have three minutes to say all your sufferings and then you be and you see all these gongos that you talk, taking all the time, uh, talking how much Iran is beautiful and respecting the minority rights because they're doing a couple of dance festivals for minorities. And the, one of the secretaries of the UN come and tell me, well, we have another Awazi delegation here that also they want to give an, a, a, a statement. Do you want or can you give a joint a statement with them. So to my surprise, I have to divide my three minutes to one minute and a half with another organization. Why? Because gongos, they talk all the time, so there is no time left. So NGOs can talk. So I was, um, last time on the periodic uh, review on human rights, uh, we were there and we saw a booklet that supposedly Iran gave to explain the uh, national and religious minorities. Uh, for my surprise, they didn't. They mentioned that there is a province called Khuzestan, which is um, Arab. They prefer to call it the Arab part inhabitant of the province they call Talawas. So they mentioned there is a province called Khuzestan, but they didn't mention that there is any Arab living there. And they didn't mention Mandai as a religion as a minority religion also that they living among Arabs. So they didn't mention them. So when we start our speech by first sentence, that same 
I am from Ahwazi community. I'm coming from the region that by indigenous called Al Ahwaz. I hear the tapping on the table that saying, say to the NGOs to using, not using forged names or um, made up names. And Iranian delegation had the time more than three minutes to nag about that. And then they followed by North Korea, Syria, Iraq. It is not enough that they had all this time. So also they're taking another time to supporting their, their, their uh, fellow states in killing all the time of NGOs to talk. So in the end, I would say that we are not only victim of bullying of the state, we are victim of mechanism of UN2. Thank you very much.